as the tenure of President Bola Tinubu as chairman of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, effectively came to an end on Sunday. However, in a dramatic twist, his colleagues at the 65th Ordinary Session holding in Abuja decided to give him another one year. A rise correspondent takes a look at the Tinubu's one year in charge of ECOWAS. In the measure where what should have been the end of an era and the beginning of a new one for ECOWAS was averted on Sunday as the regional body hands Nigeria's President Bola Tinumbu another one year to stay the ship. The last one year with Tinumbu in charge has been a period of tough political turbulence, especially with a resurgence of military coups in the sub region. Throughout this period, Tunumbu maintained a firm stance against unconstitutional changes of government in next-door neighbor republic and elsewhere in Guinea and Burkina Faso and Mali. On his watch, ECOWAS imposed economic sanctions on the junta regimes in these countries. Although ECOWAS subsequently lifted the sanctions, opting for a more diplomatic solution, the move by ECOWAS had strained relations with fellow West African countries on Saturday announced intention to completely cut themselves off and have nothing to do with the regional bloc. As part of efforts to manage and stabilize the politics in the South region, President Bola Tinumbu played a significant role in the successful outcome of the 2024 presidential elections in Senegal by facilitating talks among the various political stakeholders to avert the major political crises in the country. But on Sunday, ECOWAS was re-elected Tinubu to continue to lead the regional body. Omo Bazwai Arise News. All right, now let's uh, unpack what is uh, currently developing with ECOWAS and, of course, with President mm. Tinubu being reinstated as the chair. Congratulations to President Tinubu. Congratulations to Nigeria on this. We just hope that, to a large extent, ECOWAS will be more proactive because we now have a resurgence of coups. Prior to this time, between the late 50s and 1990, Africa was a behest of a lot of coups. In fact, across the over close to 50, 50 52 African countries, we had coups, over 100 situations of coups. We thought we had relapsed on the coups in the early 90s and probably with the return to democracy for most countries around, we thought, oh, it was all good now, until we went back to the resurgence of coups, Guinea, Niger, and the likes on the African continent. So the task ahead of President Tinubu will be consolidation of democratic values. And I'm really excited that he has elected uh, Bashir, Bashir Jumai Fai, you know, uh, to lead the charge of this and a couple of other you know, African leaders on the belt, to be able to talk to our brothers in this coup prone country of a return to democracy. I mean, we all know what Mali is fighting with Asimi Goita, they've not still returned to democracy. But I think most importantly, we should also remind these ECOWAS leaders that it is their anti-democratic values that makes coups inevitable. We do not support coups. We totally abhor coups. In the words of Thomas Isodori Noah Sankara, Abba. We really say, down with these things. But the anti-democratic values, only save for Niger, that was an outlier case. In the other cases in Guinea and the likes, we all remember that it was because of leaders that were sitting tight or democratic squabbles that we had the school. Secondly, what will be very important will be the conversation about this equal standby force. Because we now have an onslaught in the West African area as regards insecurity, rebels here and there, we're also having different ideological fighters. This standby force will cost money. And I President Tinubu is saying, he says he can assure the ECOWAS of, region of Nigeria's commitment to paying the money. But will the other parties pay? No. They have never always paid in the past. That's why I want to call them out here. President Tinubu cannot do it alone. And we're at a time when Nigeria doesn't even have the wherewithal. Because when you look at the economic capacity of the West African state, ECOWAS, Nigeria takes about 65% of it. But we have other countries too that should come in strongly. 
to be able to help us out in all of this. But they've never played their own part. They've always left most of the responsibility to Nigeria. If Operation Bakan was expending about one to two trillion, uh, billion euros on a yearly basis to be able to look at the activity, that's about the same threshold of money to cost us for a standby force. Which nation, apart from Nigeria, is going to bring that money? I think that's going to be one of the biggest challenges, apart from deepening democratic values. And I've always suggested it is a time for ECOWAS now to have a big mass PR appeal, probably launch its own ECOWAS television station across all the African countries that would deepen democratic values and also hold the leaders accountable. Okay, the 65th uh, ordinary session of uh, the ECOWAS Summit of Heads of State and Government, uh, which took place in Abuja on July 6. Well, ECOWAS holds meetings reg regularly, whether they call it extraordinary or ordinary or, you know, emergency meeting, uh, to promote the cooperation along the lines of democracy, development, and, uh, you know, sustainability initiatives among the 15 members of that uh, regional body that was established in 1975. However, three countries have pulled out of that uh, ECOWAS and they formed what they called their Alliance of Sahel States, known as the AES, uh, you know, in French. Now, uh, ahead of this meeting, the 63 ordinary session, what happened was that they met for the first time formally to announce the creation of that alliance in Niamey, uh, you know, capital of, uh, of uh, uh, Niger. Now, the, uh, the objective of this, of course, is probably a preemptive strike to remind the leaders of ECOWAS ahead of their own meeting that they still stand by their position. So the big fear that this shows is the fear of the disintegration of ECOWAS. Is ECOWAS disintegrating close to his 50th anniversary. Now, to the main uh, meeting itself, at that meeting, what were the fallouts? President Bola Tinubu was returned uh, for another year in office as ECOWAS chairman. He was appointed ECOWAS chairman uh, in July 2023 in Guinea-Bissau. Now he's been asked to uh, continue in office. Well, congratulations to him. Congratulations uh, to Nigeria. And he made a number of points in his acceptance speech. If I may just unpack what he said. One, the fact that you know, these states are encouraged to continue uh, to cooperate economically, which is the original objective of ECOWAS in any case, and to, to share experiences and work together. He talked about the ECOWAS standby force and offered Nigeria's National Center for you know, Anti-Terrorism uh, you know, putting the services of Nigerian Center uh, at the uh, service of other members of uh, ECOWAS. And he even invited, you know, his brother, heads of state uh, or president, uh, to visit the Nigerian Center to see the kind of facilities that are available there. He talked about community levies, the need for members of ECOWAS to meet their community levies. In fact, when, you know, it was confirmed that President Tinubu has returned for another session as uh, ECOWAS chairman. I just concluded that the celebration of ECOWAS at 50 next year, maybe this is a tactical way to make Nigeria responsible for most of the uh, financial commitments because Nigeria carries many of these West African states uh, on their back. You don't want to know the details, you know, that would be like uh, revealing uh, what I saw in the forest. But Nigeria is the leading, you know, is the leading country and we help all these states. But beyond that, however, you know, President Tinubu has been commended for the efforts that he has made. Now, the other thing that President Tinubu also said is that he has appointed a special envoy, uh, Basiru Fai, the president of uh, Senegal, to be accompanied by uh, President Foy Nyasingbe of uh, Togo to negotiate, to engage with uh, the leaders of uh, Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, and see how to bring them into the fold, which means it's a major priority also for President Tinubu as a chair of ECOWAS to ensure that ECOWAS does not disintegrate under his watch. I find it curious, however, that he has chosen Foy Yasingbe uh, to partner with uh, FAI to talk to these people. Uh, Foy Yasingbe doesn't give a good example in terms if you are seeking democratic consolidation. 
uh, is using his, uh, his, his present tenure in office by through unconstitutional means, by changing the constitution. And that is precisely part of the problem that we have in uh, West Africa. What is the difference between those who take up arms and seize power and those who manipulate the constitution to retain themselves in power? So ECOWAS doesn't seem to have the political will to stand by his own constitutive protocol to have zero tolerance for any form of attempt to uh, hold on to power or to seize power through the back door. Dr. Uh, Ali Umar uh, uh, Toure, the president of the ECOWAS Commission in his speech, was celebrating the fact that there has been democratic transition in Nigeria, Senegal, in Liberia, and that later this year, there will be Ghana. Well, is, it, is democracy consolidating in Africa, in West Africa? That is the question to ask. And uh, the ECOWAS Commission that, uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Toure leads is part of the issue that has to be on the table as ECOWAS celebrates at 50. Now, that ECOWAS Commission, how do they distribute offices? Who are the people who are in charge? These are some of the questions. And to what extent is the commission also effective in making sure that the uh, ECOWAS protocols are respected? But as for the concern about uh, the ECOWAS standby force, which President Tinubu emphasized, well, it's a good thing to note. And we hope that the member states that he has called upon to contribute their own community levies uh, would do so and not assume that Nigeria will continue to carry uh, ECOWAS on its back as we begin to look forward to the 50th anniversary uh, next year. Absolutely. I, I, I'm very much in one accord with Dr. Abati as well as with Rufai this morning. Uh, I personally feel that this is a strategic victory for Nigeria. Why do I say this? Currently, two out of three of Nigeria's borders are with non-ECOWAS nations. Niger, which happens to be one of the larger borders, of course, is now with a nation that has formed a confederation treaty with the Alliance of Sahel States. Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali met just before this ECOWAS special meeting. And what they did is they consolidated their relationship. They signed a confederation treaty. They also established that the Alliance of Sahel States would now form its own parliament. And things are moving very quickly. I watched a video of Captain Ibrahim Traore of Burkina Faso arriving in Niamey for this meeting. He was greeted by Brigadier General Chiani of Niger Republic. What they chose to do is to take a walk from the airport to the presidential villa. It was a 10-kilometer walk, and the two leaders walked hand in hand, and the 10-kilometer stretch of that walk was lined with people who were cheering them on and celebrating them. Now, this shows that the Alliance of Sahel States is able, has been able to garner support and gain populist vote. Now, the question is, how is ECOWAS going to carry its people along? How is ECOWAS going to restore people's confidence? And how is ECOWAS going to reinvest itself in people's support and belief in what ECOWAS is supposed to stand for? Now, appointing Senegalese President uh, Baziru Faye to go and negotiate on behalf of ECOWAS with Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger is quite an intriguing development because, of course, Baziru Faye came, on came onto the scene, won his presidential ticket based off of the fact that he holds similar anti-imperialist views as those who have broken away from ECOWAS. So it'll be interesting to see how much of a negotiation that will be able to, you know, how much that negotiation will be able to broker. But the fact remains is that the Alliance of Sahel States is digging deeper roots. Uh, they're conducting military drills with support from Russia and China. And ECOWAS continues to hold, me to hold meetings. So it will be very intriguing to see how the shift of power in, in the region, the dynamics, how they are managed and how they develop from here. However, in order to ensure that Nigeria is not isolated from the West, rest of West Africa, reappointing President Tinubu as the chairman of ECOWAS was a very, very important development.